Uh, so my name is Justin Maxwell, and I am a team lead on the technical support team based out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. So on the East Coast, uh, I know a lot of people are in the central area, so thanks for joining us during your lunch hour. Uh, today we're going to be talking about planning your SOLIDWORKS upgrade, and we're going to take a little spin on it, and instead of just talking about how to plan, what we're going to do is kind of take this on the support end of things and see some common mistakes that we get calls all the time about as people are going through uh, that upgrade process to whatever version it may be, and again, how to avoid them. So 10 common mistakes, how to avoid them during your SOLIDWORKS upgrade. All right, so everybody right now, uh, at least most people, are on SOLIDWORKS 2018. You know, everything seems uh, fine and dandy until you get that little pop-up on the bottom right of your screen that says, hey, there's a new SOLIDWORKS version available. Uh, click here to download now, right? And then all of a sudden, everyone starts that transition from their 2018 or maybe even older to that uh, brand new SOLIDWORKS 2019 this year. Uh, there's a ton of reasons to upgrade, right? But uh, the biggest reason is that pop-up pop, -up, that pop -up happens, right? And what you're doing before seems kind of old. You want to get that new uh, that new version. At least that's how I feel every year. So really, uh, before we start going over these uh, ten mistakes that people make, uh, a big question is why upgrade, right? People call in all the time. They're like, "Hey, I see a newer version is available, but why should I upgrade to it? What's the point?" And at least from my uh, point of view, there's a ton of reasons to upgrade. The first one is new features. Uh, every year, SOLIDWORKS publishes this What's New document. It's like 300 pages long, filled with content that they've added to the software. Some of that content is the first time anybody has ever seen it. Some of that content is stuff that uh, they've seen other CAD softwares use, and they've implemented it into SOLIDWORKS. And sometimes it's from other programs that the system has, uh, and, and they kind of trickle it down into the SOLIDWORKS environment. So. There's tons of new stuff, like I said, 300 pages of it. Definitely look into that What's New document, see what's out there. Another critical reason to upgrade is bug fixes. So every version of SOLIDWORKS has a ton of bugs, bug fixes in itself, and then every service pack that comes out has a ton of, bun of, has a ton of bug fixes as well. So uh, it's really important to keep up to date, especially if you see one of these, uh, you know, these bugs, these things that happen in the software. Every software has it. It has to get tackled by programmers. Sometimes it's a significant enough change that we can't update it in the current version that you're at. It needs to be the new version that's coming out. I think there was 30 or 40 different specific bugs that were fixed in 2019 SP0. Maybe you have a new hardware, right? You have a 4K monitor or a new Microsoft Studio and you want to use that stuff with SOLIDWORKS. If you're still on SOLIDWORKS 2015 or 14 or anything that's uh, you know, too old, you're not going to be able to utilize all that new hardware and all that new technology that's out today. So to stay up to date, again, that's another reason to upgrade to the newest version available. Maybe you want better performance. Every year, SOLIDWORKS shows this dramatic increase in performance, whether it be for drawings, or large assemblies, or even just parts, you know, like a sheet metal part with a ton of features on it. Every year they show this chart that shows how much better it is in the newer version of the software. So SOLIDWORKS takes that pretty seriously. It's updated every year, uh, and they always talk about this performance. It's one of the biggest things they talk about every single year. So if you have an older system um, or an older seat of SOLIDWORKS, and you upgrade, chances are you're definitely going to have better performance, and, uh, and that's a huge reason to upgrade. Another one that, that I was thinking of is you're on subscription, right? You're paying for maintenance every year. If you are on that maintenance plan for SOLIDWORKS, you get upgrades every year. Uh, you might as well you know, use what you're paying for, upgrade to the newest version, and then you get all these other reasons. So really, with all this stuff, and obviously there's a ton more, the question shouldn't be why you should upgrade. I would ask why not upgrade, right? So I'm from technical support, like I mentioned before. I like numbers. I like looking at things a little bit more in depth. Um, here's an interesting slide that I put together. I've got to have a chart, right? I'm in tech support. This is actually the volume of calls that we get at Computer Aid Technology 
that have to do with upgrading SOLIDWORKS over the course of a year. And this year is from October to September. That's the, year, uh, the, the annual year of a SOLIDWORKS release. It's released in October, and then the new version comes out the following October. So you can see that in the beginning, when October rolls around, there's not a ton of people upgrading right away. But immediately, it trickles up through uh, you know, November and December, and the first week of the year is actually our highest volume of people upgrading. Whether that's just because you know, you're seeing webinars like this, or you're hearing about SOLIDWORKS World coming up, or maybe it's just because you have more free time in, in you know, those weeks of the year. Uh, most people upgrade around this time. And that's usually around when SP1 is coming out as well. So it probably has something to do with uh, people waiting for that first service pack as well. And then we stay pretty consistent over the rest of the year, but we slowly taper down into the following October when we're going to spike up again. So uh, pretty interesting, at least I think, uh, of how the year goes of people upgrading. So let's get to it. My top 10 list of mistakes that people make during upgrading. The first one is a lot of people upgrade without testing first. This is a huge thing, and it's by far the most important thing I'm going to talk about today. When you are going to be upgrading software, you need to test on your system. You need to test your workflows, you need to test your files, and all your most critical needs in the software. Hopefully this goes uh, with all softwares, but SOLIDWORKS especially. We like to see SOLIDWORKS as one of your most critical things that you do from day to day, especially if you're you know, watching this webinar and you use SOLIDWORKS every day, it's probably one of your number one softwares that you use. You don't want to upgrade without testing. So build maybe a test machine or have a virtual machine or maybe test one of your computers that's laying around the office, install the newest version of SOLIDWORKS on it, throw some files on it, click around and see what you can and cannot do. You also want to make sure your hardware works, right? Uh, again, I've seen things like 4K monitors, um, any type of hardware that you might get throughout the year. Maybe you have a 3D mouse. You want to test that. Make sure it works with the newest version and make sure you do this before you implement it across your entire company. Uh, and then also uh, any third-party programs, you want to make sure that uh, you test those as well. A lot of people have Mastercam and, and Bobcam and, and things like that. You want to make sure that those work with your newest version of SOLIDWORKS. You also just want to test your entire environment. Um, Somebody mentioned uh, PDM. That's a huge thing. If you talk to anybody on our inflow team and they ask about, um, or you, you ask about upgrading, they're going to ask, have you tested? And there definitely are ways of testing PDM and SOLIDWORKS. So um, that's something we can tackle after the webinar, uh, how to look at testing PDM. But we've got inflow specialists um, that, that do all that stuff all the time. And they're probably more adamant about testing than we are here at the SOLIDWORKS side of things. You also want to check out that net, that what's new guide. Uh, test some of the new features. A lot of times, it'll go most of the year. Somebody will be using a new version of the software. They'll call in about a question, and we'll say, "Oh yeah, haven't you been using you know the tab and slot feature that came out in 2018?" And they don't know what that is. So, really, if you're not using the new features, then you're not getting everything out of that new version of the software. So definitely check out the what's new guide. Flip through it. Look at the top enhancements, right? So this is like a little screenshot of some of the top ones of 2019. See if any of them apply to you. Uh, they could dramatically increase your uh, productivity if you, you know, use the newest and latest and greatest of the software. My number two uh, mistake that people make uh, when upgrading is upgrading too early. So you see that pop up. You click on the upgrade button, and you go to that latest and greatest software, right? Well, if you're not your own one-man shop, that can probably have some issues. Uh, the biggest one is once a file is upgraded, so say you open a 2018 file in 2019, and then you save it, it's now permanently a 2019 file. Uh, I can't even tell you how many calls we get on support in the beginning couple months of the year of people saying, hey, I've got a bunch of 2019 files, and I need them back in 2018 format, because some guy <laughs> some guy or girl upgraded SOLIDWORKS and opened up half of our files and saved them. Well, uh, 
unfortunately, there's no way of doing that. Um, usually, to, uh, the, the previous version of SP5 can open up uh, the next year's version. So, for example, if you get 2018 SP5, it's likely that it will be able to open up a 2019 file. But you're just opening it to view it. You don't have access to the features or the sketches or anything inside it. Uh, so it's pretty much useless. It's the same thing as taking your file, saving it as like a step file or a parasolid, and then opening it in an older version of SOLIDWORKS. It's kind of dumb geometry. So not, not a really good situation if you're a user. You don't want to be that guy that, that downloaded it and installed it too early before everyone else. The safest, the safest option, as you can see here, is you want to upgrade everyone at your company at the same time. And obviously that's a transition uh, depending on how many people you have. You know, you might not be able to update everyone the same morning. Um, but you want to have everyone on an upgrade path, usually within the same couple days, uh, even for, for very large customers, just because you don't want to have this hybrid mix of files. You don't want anyone in an older version not able to, to fully work. Hey, Justin. Oh, I just realized my audio yeah. got messed up. Sorry okay. about that. Hey, no problem. We can hear you now. Go ahead. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so number three kind of goes hand in hand with updating too early is upgrading too late. Um, this one's kind of a kind of an interesting one because you'd think that how could I upgrade too late? I should upgrade whenever I, I want to, right? Well, one thing that a lot of people think of is I'm going to wait until Service Pack 3 or Service Pack 4 to upgrade SOLIDWORKS because by then all of the bugs and all of the glitches of the new year have been phased out. People have found them. People have fixed them. And sure, that's a, not a horrible train of thought, right? It's, it's a little more safer than upgrading instantly and just uh, trusting it if you didn't test it. But if you actually find a bug, it's a lot more likely to be fixed if it's earlier in the year. Um, as SOLIDWORKS gets all these bug reports, they try to fix them as they come. If you wait until Service Pack 4 or Service Pack 5, they're buried deep enough that it's probably not going to get to your issue. It's probably going to get pushed into the next version or even later. So if you upgrade you know, at Service Pack 1 or Service Pack 2, you play around, you find something, it's much more likely that we're going to be able to fix it. Uh, if you find an SP5, then it's kind of unfortunate. It's probably not going to get fixed, that version, especially because there's no more service packs coming out at that point. Um, but SP4 is the same. There's only one more one more chance. right? If you find an SP0 or SP1, you've got five service packs coming up that could possibly fix that issue. So um, that's a pretty big thing. All right, it's, it's huge because I hear a lot of customers um, have that, that train of thought, and it's kind of hard to break, where not everyone's going to find the issue that you have. You may think that what you do is, is very common, and you know thousands of other people do the exact same thing, but it's probably not like that. Um, you're probably the only person that does things exactly the way you do them. Uh, as you view SOLIDWORKS, you know there's a million ways of doing anything. So uh, you want to upgrade, you want to test, but then when you do upgrade, make sure that you can do everything you can. If you find an issue, that's when you call your reseller or you know, CTI if that's us. The number four is forgetting about PDM or any other program that works alongside SOLIDWORKS. For PDM especially, uh, you need to upgrade it alongside SOLIDWORKS. This used to be kind of an iffy thing where you would upgrade it first and then later on upgrade SOLIDWORKS. But now they both use the same installation manager. So you want to upgrade both of them at the same time. If you use admin images, PDM and SOLIDWORKS can both be in that same admin image. And it works totally fine. We've had hundreds and hundreds of customers uh, do that process. So you want to make sure that you upgrade SOLIDWORKS and PDM at the same time relatively. The biggest reason is you can't have SOLIDWORKS be newer than PDM. So if you've ever upgraded SOLIDWORKS and then tried to open up your PDM add-in and you've upgraded to the newest uh, version, that's probably not going to be a successful day for you. Uh, you're probably going to have to downgrade SOLIDWORKS, which is not a fun process, uh, or get everyone upgraded, including PDM, which if you have PDM, you know that that is a task as well. So you want to make sure that 
PDM, SolidWorks are on the same, at least major release. You can be different service packs. That's a big question that comes up along the years. Uh, can I upgrade PDM uh, to SP5 because the specific bug is fixed? You can do that, no problem. But major release, you need to be on the, the, uh, the same one in most cases. You can technically have SolidWorks be older, um, but it's not really recommended. And if you're going to be upgrading, you might as well upgrade both of them at the same time. So on technical support, uh, another big common issue that people run into is they upgrade to the newest version and they have some graphics issues, right? You, uh, you start a new part and you rotate it and it kind of does like a, a hazy effect or it shows like clones of what you're looking at or maybe SolidWorks just doesn't even open at all. A lot of those things are just because of your graphics card. SolidWorks tests and, uh, and certifies graphics cards and graphics drivers throughout the year. Um, but it's most important when you upgrade to that new version because the software could be completely different graphics-wise. So every new version, the cards and the drivers are tested by SolidWorks, um, and each version would have its own requirements. All right, so uh, every year, check that driver after you upgrade. Uh, there's two ways of checking what driver you should be on. The first one is the easiest, and that's just by opening up the SolidWorks RX tool. So you just uh, can go in your Start menu and type in SolidWorks RX, or you can open up SolidWorks, and on the little Home tab on the far right, you can open that up and click on the SolidWorks RX link there. It'll open up this, uh, this RX tool, and then in the Diagnostics tab, which is the second tab from the left, It'll show you at the top your graphics card and your graphics driver. If you if you uh, upgrade to a newer version, most likely you're going to see a screen that looks like this. It's going to say uh, in blue that your current driver is certified, but it's for an older release of SolidWorks. It's recommended that you update the, the late to the latest driver. The cool thing about that RX tool is you can click on that button, download latest driver and it's going to immediately download uh, the full driver installation file for your specific machine, your specific graphics card, and the version of the RX tool that you opened. So this is kind of a, another question that people have is, should you update to the newest uh, graphics driver if you have multiple versions installed, right? Because you have the option of uh, installing 2019 and keeping 2018 on it at the same time. I always recommend updating to the latest driver certified. So uh, if you're going to be using 2019, update to the, the driver that's specified for 2019. Um, and vice versa. If you're going to be still using 2018, then you might want to stay at that driver. But uh, always update the newest, the latest, and greatest of that driver as you update SolidWorks. <clears throat> Once you click on that link and download it, then it'll tell you in green that the graphics card is supported, the driver is up to date, uh, and then there's a little link there to the SolidWorks.com slash pages uh, slash services video card testing. That's the website you can also go on um, from SolidWorks.com and you can search for specific graphics cards and, dra and graphics drivers as there as well. Um, so you can see that I clicked on Lenovo, I looked for certified cards, for my P71, I clicked on the P4000 graphics card for the version of 2019, and it gives me that result there at the bottom. That little blue text, the 411.63, that's your link to download that specific driver uh, so you can get on the newest, latest, and greatest, and everything can run smoothly. The reason this is so important is because a ton of issues that happen in SolidWorks are related to graphics. Uh, SolidWorks is pretty graphics intensive. So if you're calling in and you say you have an issue because you just upgraded 19 and something looks strange, right? Uh, we're going to make sure that you're on the right, the right card and the right driver. And if you're not, we're going to get you on that before we do anything else. Uh, it's by far the most common fix to, uh, to issues in SolidWorks. It's just updating that graphics driver to the newest version. <clears throat> All right. Number six uh, is missing the toolbox during the upgrade. 
This one is uh, more common than you'd expect. Uh, people upgrade to the newest version of SOLIDWORKS. Maybe their toolbox is managed in PDM, or maybe it's managed on a network drive somewhere. Once they set up SOLIDWORKS and they, they tell it to look at their shared toolbox, you open up SOLIDWORKS and you get an error message that looks something like this. It says, hey, the whole wizard is, or whole wizard and, uh, and toolbox database is not the expected version. So the whole wizard and toolbox use the same database file. Um, this kind of confuses people too because they see the whole wizard text and they're not sure if that has to do with uh, toolbox specifically. But this is saying that the, the database down there at the bottom is 21.1 and, ex and SOLIDWORKS expects it to be 22. So that means I'm still using the 2018 database in 2019. This can be fixed. Um, the easiest way is to pick one machine and tell it to look at the older toolbox and then do a repair installation. Uh, so that's actually just in your control panel in Windows, doing a modify on your install of SOLIDWORKS, and then triggering a repair. And that will rebuild and upgrade that specific toolbox that you told it to look at to the new version. The other way is a little bit more difficult, and I'd probably just if say say your PDM uh, your PDM manages your toolbox, I'd probably just give support a call, just give technical support a call, and there are tools that we can manually update uh, your your graphics, uh, not your graphics, your toolbox database as well. As you can see here, there's a data utilities folder. This is actually in your program files, and there's an exe called upgrade update browser database, and that'll update the database from the old version to the new version. So this is what the repair would do. Uh, but kind of a more manual process. This is the way that I actually usually do it on technical support because it's much faster. Um, so if you ever get into the situation where you updated and your toolbox is the wrong version, uh, just give us a call on technical support and we can look into it and, uh, and obviously help you out. All right, so this one's kind of a personal one, but uh, number seven is not adjusting your installation options. Uh, it's kind of an organization thing for me, but as I install the newer version of SOLIDWORKS, I like to keep everything very specific and separated from other versions. This is specifically important for me because I have a lot of versions of SOLIDWORKS installed on my computer, but even if you don't, you probably want to follow this process. And as I've done technical support, not many people do this. They just get to that end page of the installation manager and they just hit the modify now or the install now and, and run it. But as you can see here, there's some things that I like to do. Um, the background downloader is the download option. You can either have that on or off. If the background downloader is on, then SOLIDWORKS uh, is going to check if there's a newer version periodically. And when it is, it's going to download it. And then you're going to see that pop up that we talked about in the beginning down at the bottom of your screen that says, hey, there's a newer version available. It's going to download it, and then you're going to have the option to install it right then and there. If it's off, that leaves that to you. When do you want to update? When do you want to check for newer files? When do you want to download? So I typically have mine off, um, but again, that's a personal choice. Do you want it to automatically look for uh, downloads and installs, or do you want to do that yourself? Totally up to you. Either way is fine. I would just take note that there is a chance that you might have some network slowdowns from time to time if you do have the background downloader on because it's going to be you know, downloading files in the background, right, as it's named. The other thing I do is I make sure that my installation location specifically says the version. So as you can see, the grayed outline there says installation location, C, program files, SOLIDWORKS 2019. That's different than the default. The default is C program files SOLIDWORKS data, I think, or no, I'm sorry, SOLIDWORKS corp, uh, C-O-R-P. And that's the main folder that SOLIDWORKS likes to install to. The problem with that is as you update from year to year to year, that can get it kind of clustered together into this mix of all these different versions. And when that happens, it's hard to uninstall one of the versions, or it's hard to troubleshoot if you're going in and trying to figure out, you know, if something's going wrong. Uh, what could be the cause. When I log into somebody's machine, if they have a bunch of different folders all kind of jammed together in their program files, 
I usually uninstall everything and then reinstall fresh and clean using this kind of technique of naming every folder its own name. So then, uh, you know, it's nice and organized going forward. And it's almost impossible to troubleshoot when it's not like that. So this is pretty important. All you do is in that installation options, you hit that change button and you change it to the folder that you want it to be named. Hand in hand with that, I also named my toolbox folder uh, SolidWorks Data 2019, 2018, 2017, whatever version I'm installing. Because again, the default location is SolidWorks Data. And then as new versions are installed, it's going to be SolidWorks Data 2, SolidWorks Data 3, SolidWorks Data 4. And then good luck going into that folder and figuring out which one is your current version. Uh, sometimes it goes back to the beginning because you deleted one. Uh, it could be completely out of order. It's, it's just not a nice, uh, nice organization to have. So I always adjust those options. I always put all of these files in their own specific folders. It just makes it a lot nicer uh, going forward, and you're going to have a lot less issues. Um, a lot of people call and they say, hey, I've got 2017, 18, and 19 all installed at the same time. Can I uninstall 18? And the answer is yes, but if all your folders are all jammed together and you've got uh, folders shared and, and files shared in between versions, there's a chance that something could go wrong. Um, I can't say that I've necessarily seen it uh, happen very often, but uh, if, if it's separated into its own program files directory, then you're definitely not going to have any issues at all. Uh, number eight is not updating your system options. This one, I would say probably 80% to 90% of people don't ever touch their system options in SOLIDWORKS after updating, and it can be a huge issue. Uh, the biggest one in 18 that we saw all the time was the symbol library file. So as people updated the set to 18 from 17, their symbol library file got deleted out of the 17 folder, and it never changed to the 18 folder. Sure, it's supposed to, I guess. Um, SOLIDWORKS is supposed to realize that you have a new symbol library in this new folder location. But if you keep your settings from year to year, which almost everyone does, they keep their settings the same, those settings can include your system options, like things like file locations. The easiest way to change all your file locations to reference the new version would be to just open up your options. So that's hitting the little gear icon at the far top of your SOLIDWORKS screen. And then in System Options, you hit File Locations on the left. After you click on File Locations, in starting in 2017, I believe, they added this button called Edit All. And what that does is it opens up uh, a table of all of your file locations. Typically, you have to do the Show Folders for there uh, towards the center of the screen and drop down to the individual uh, items that you want to change the folder location for. But if you hit Edit All, it brings up this big list of all the different locations that SOLIDWORKS is looking at. The nicest thing about this list, not only can you slide it up and down and very easily see what you need to do, you can also hit Find and Replace. So every time I upgrade to a new version, I open up my options, I go to File Locations, I hit this Find and Replace, and then I just type in find 2018 and replace it with 2019 and then replace all. What that does is it finds any time the text 2018 was used and replaces it with the text 2019. And now all your file locations are referencing the new folders. Uh, so this is pretty significant. Uh, as I was saying, the, the most common one in 18 was that symbol library file. What happened was uh, if your symbol library was not up to date, or you were pointing to a location that no longer existed, you couldn't even see anything like the uh, like the diameter symbol was the one that was most common. People would call in and they say, hey, I'm dimensioning this circle, and it says M-O-D-D-I-A-M. And that was the actual the tagline that's supposed to link to the diameter symbol. So all we had to do was do this, what I just showed you, do the replace all of 2018 and 2019, or 2017 to 18 in that circumstance, and everything was fixed, the library file worked, um, and you saw your diameter symbol again. So that was the, the important thing, right? <clears throat> Number nine on my list is forgetting about your server. 
And this is specifically if, if you have a, a network license of um, serial numbers. A lot of people forget about the server and they upgrade all the client machines and they forget to update the, uh, the SNL on the server, the Solid Network License Manager. So if you have a network license, the very first step you should ever take before updating is to update the SNL on the server. So you update the newest version uh, and then you just activate it. So once it's updated, you can activate it and then you're on the newest license. So then anybody can use SolidWorks of any version. Um, the SNL can work, it's kind of backwards compatible. So you can have, say, a 2019 uh, license manager running and anybody using 2019 or previous, 18, 17, 16, whatever it is, can run SolidWorks no problem. Um, so older clients still work uh, with a newer license manager. The easiest way to update the server is to just go onto the server itself, log into it, search for the tool uh, check for updates that's in your start menu, and that's a SOLIDWORKS program that gets installed, uh, and it will automatically see that there's a new version available. It'll walk you through the download portion of it and the installation portion of it. It only takes about a minute, and then you're updated, and anyone can use SOLIDWORKS again. Uh, a common question that people have is, is this going to result in any downtime, right? I've got 100 users using SOLIDWORKS. Uh, if I update my license manager, are people going to go down? And the answer most likely is no. Um, there's a timeout period that happens before somebody's kicked off of their license of SOLIDWORKS, and that timeout period is somewhere between like 10 and 15 minutes. This update, even the download and update process together, is maybe three or four minutes long. So you're done, you're upgraded, everything's fine, you're activated, and people are fine. Uh, if you have a server that's not on the internet and you need to activate it um, using email or by some type of license file, then that's a little bit of a different story. Uh, you will have to, to get that beforehand or, or do the email approach and kind of wait for that response, which takes a couple minutes. But uh, most likely, you're not going to have any downtime. I usually tell people to like, do it during lunch or just before or after. You don't have to have like a whole half day set aside to upgrade the server if you just have SolidWorks. If you have PDM, then that's a little bit of a different story. Upgrading that server has uh, a couple more steps to it. <clears throat> All right, and then number 10 on my list is not asking for any help along the way. If you're upgrading SolidWorks, call your reseller. Uh, if you have any questions or run into any problems, call us. We've had so many people call us days and days later saying that they're upgrades are failing and they have you know these 15 logs that of all these different machines that are failing their upgrade call us while it's happening we can get in we can help you uh, one huge thing is CTI at least uh, I think any reseller we support our customers activation and installation issues whether or not you're on maintenance so if you can't install or you can't activate call us even if you're not even on on maintenance we, we will help you install the software you pay for that software we're going to help you get it running. We're going to help you get it activated. Um, you don't necessarily have to be on subscription for that. All right. So that's my top 10 list of mistakes that people make. I'm sure we're going to have questions, but uh, but that's it. So again, it shouldn't be why upgrade, right? Why not upgrade? Maybe you have a uh, maybe you have some reasons why not to upgrade, and we can we can tackle those. So go ahead and uh, type in any questions that you guys have. Um, we have got a couple other uh, webinars this December. We've got a DriveWorks design automation one and a uh, GrabCAD print one. So if you guys use 3D printers, that one's pretty cool. Uh, modifying CAD parts with the FDM mode in GrabCAD. Awesome. Well, thank you, Justin. Uh, I broke down a couple questions here, um, so we'll get to those first. And then if you guys do have further questions, just type them in the chat right now, and, and we'll get to all of those. So the first one I've written down is, um, what do you recommend to do if the SolidWorks users on their computers are not the administrators, so they can't use things like the background downloader? So what do you recommend in that scenario? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I guess everybody's a little bit different there. Um, not having admin rights doesn't necessarily mean that you can't install um, or you can't download, but if you cannot download, then 
that just means the background downloader is not an option. So um, there's multiple other ways of getting the newest version. Uh, one way would be to contact us at CATI. We have an FTP site that we can send you. Uh, another way is uh, you can get the discs mailed to you. Uh, if you really want that physical disc, there's a link this year um, that you have to actually type in your email address and serial number, and they'll email you a disc. Or not email you, they'll, they'll physically mail you a disc uh, that you can install from. And that's just starting this year because they used to do that automatically. They used to send out a disc uh, every year. Uh, they no longer do that, so you have to physically request it. So um, that's what I would say there. In regards to having admin rights and just upgrading, um, a lot of companies do it a little bit differently. You could always install under an admin account, right? You could log in and install as an admin, and then anyone can then use the software after. Uh, or there's a couple other ways as well. So I would say if you're trying to upgrade and you're having issues because of permissions, uh, just give us a call and we can look at it because it's probably specific to your exact circumstance. Perfect. Thank you. Um, the next one I have is you mentioned upgrading SolidWorks alongside PDM. Uh, the question was asked if that's a new feature to 2019. Um, and I think some clarification on that one is if you're going to be upgrading a PDM server, it's still a two-step two process. So still upgrade the PDM first and then go, or SolidWorks first. I don't think the order matters. But uh, you will still be upgrading the PDM server and then upgrading a SolidWorks uh, client. And I think that's what that is asking. Yeah, is, and, is and what I mean by alongside is the, the PDM client end. On the on the client computers, that installs with SolidWorks at the at the same time, uh, where it used to be a separate installation. But yeah, the, the upgrading the PDM server that's definitely a separate step. Yes. Perfect. Uh, question was asked: What about part templates? So what happens if you're upgrading part templates? Yeah. So part templates are the same thing as normal parts. Uh, if you want them in the newer version, you just open it and then do a file save as and and save it as a part template again in the new version. Uh, you don't have to uh, update your part templates every year if you don't want to, though. Uh, it's, it automatically updates as it opens, so you're not going to see like warnings or anything if you're using an outdated template file. Awesome. Uh, this is a good question. I like this one. Um, about where do you think the cutoff is for justifying an admin image for a number of users, anyway? Uh, yeah. It's always a it's always a question is how many users does it take till we can use an admin image? Um, most people that I work with, uh, you know, if you've got five, ten, or more uh, somewhere, maybe in the double digits, then then it's definitely helpful. But really, even if you have three or four, depending on what you want to do, how much control you want to have, you can use that admin image. There's people that have two seats that use an admin image just because they want to be in control of that seat of SolidWorks. The admin image is is equally uh, helpful installing as it is controlling. So you can't modify an install if it was installed with an admin image, and you can't do, and you can control settings if you want to. Uh, there's a ton of stuff that you can do uh, in an admin image that's just more of a control thing than a than a benefit of speed. But but yeah, I would say uh, most likely if you're in the double digits of users, then I would definitely say admin image is is pertinent in that situation. Mm -hmm. So I do want to let everybody know there will be, this is being recorded, the questions are being recorded also. In the chat, I just posted where you can find the recording. At the end, it'll be up on our YouTube channel. Again, it'll probably take a few days before we get it posted up there, but definitely check out our YouTube channel for all of our webcasts, and this one will be up there as well. Um, also, Justin, is this presentation uh, going to be up to share, or you, will you be able to email that out if possible? Yeah, that's no problem at all. Uh, my okay. email is just jmaxwell at cati.com. If anybody on here you know, wants to email me, that's no problem. Awesome. Thank you. So a couple more questions. Um, it looks like this one's more of a PDM question, so we may uh, have to default this one to inflow, but it's when you update all. So a couple more questions. Um, it looks like this one's more of a PDM question, so we may uh, have to default this one to inflow, but it's when you update all the files in a PDM vault, is there an easy way to upgrade all of those files? Yeah, so that's a that's a thing that is a is kind of a tricky thing to answer. Um, yes, you can upgrade your files. There is a file upgrade utility that PDM has. Um, from my experience, we normally don't recommend using it. Uh, and the reason that is is because uh, all your files 
in your PDM vault are, are used by you and your users. Um, and by telling a system to go in and update all of them to the newest version, you're telling a, a computer program to just open up and save a file and then call it a day. Um, the issue that could lie there is you might have some things that have errors after opening and saving. Uh, there could be files that are already in a broken state just waiting to be rebuilt and, and then it's broken or, or situations like that where references could go wrong. Um, we normally don't want a computer to, to do that for us and we want to see those errors and tackle them as they come. So what I typically say to, to people is as you upgrade to your newer version, um, upgrade the files as they come to you. Um, if you need to update all of them, there is a utility, but I'd definitely call Inflow Support before doing that just to get their feedback on it in your situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the question was asked, uh, if you need the media disks, where can you request those? And if you guys do need media disks, uh, contact your uh, sales rep or your account manager. Uh, just ask them for a disk and, and we can get that mailed out to you. Yep. Yeah, there is a link as well this year. They started that in 19. I'm not, a, I'm not sure off the top of my head what that link is, but um, there is a, if you just search it on, on the SOLIDWORKS website, I'm sure it's out there. You just type in your name and your um, serial number, but it's probably faster to call your sales rep than, than it is to go through that process. So this one's more of an in-depth question. We may have to answer this one offline. Uh, it's asking how you would test that PDM environment offline. Um, and actually, we'll probably get to, we'll get to that question offline, so we'll reach out to you after that one and um, get you connected with our inflow department, and we can, we can show you how to test your new PDM environment. Um, this question, if you're using a third-party PDM, will it work with the SOLIDWORKS PDM? Do you have any insight I guess that on that one? I guess that depends. Um, so it depends on the situation and, and the program that you're talking about. Uh, PDM can work with a lot of other softwares. Uh, I don't know about other data management softwares per se, though. That would probably be something that we'd have to tackle on a, on a specific support call, seeing what you use and, and what you're trying to do. So that one's kind of hard to answer off the fly. Yeah, yeah, that one is more of a situational. Depends on which, which softwares you have. Um, and if you guys uh, want further questions also, feel free to call support and we'll, we'll dig into these for you. Definitely. Um, so if you install an admin images, with an admin image, uh, does the client computer reference the admin image after the install is complete? And does this cause network slowdowns? So uh, answer the first question, yes. It does ping that location uh, to see if there's an update made to that admin image. Uh, it would be negligible on, on a performance impact. It's only on startup of the software. So if you saw any uh, impact of performance, it would just be uh, a second or so starting up SOLIDWORKS where it's checking uh, you know, to see if there's an update made. Uh, I guess I have seen some cases where the startup is a little slower because of that, because maybe the network is slow or something like that. But it, it's very rare that you would have uh, a performance impact because of that. Awesome. If you do, though, give us a call. We, we can fix it. So it's not, it's not something that's intended for it to be a slower startup just because you use an admin image. Correct. Yeah, if you guys are seeing any issues, call support. Um, and then this last one, this is a good question. Um, mainly when upgrading with the toolbox, uh, what, recommend, what recommendations do you have for using a shared toolbox location? So say you have a toolbox on the server location. How would you upgrade all of your clients pointing to that new toolbox? Yeah, so uh, there's kind of a couple ways you can tackle that. Um, one way that a lot of customers do is they, as they update, they tell, or as they upgrade SOLIDWORKS, they tell SOLIDWORKS to create a local toolbox uh, on each computer. So that's a couple minutes of installation, and then you create a duplicate toolbox there on your C drive, and then later on you direct it to the network location. But really, if you have everyone pointing at the network location, the first computer that upgrades should, should look out at that network and it should upgrade the um, toolbox with it. And then all the other ones, as they upgrade, will see that it's already upgraded and it'll just skip that process of the install. So there's kind of two ways to do it. The safest way that I would say the majority of people do is they tell it to install their own local toolbox and then later on they direct it to the network location. 
correct. Yeah, I've seen that work quite a few times as well. Well, awesome. I think that is all the questions. Um, I do have that one question. We will reach out to you offline. If you guys have further questions, feel free to call in to support. Um, email Justin if you want his presentation. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording now. So.